when I saw this little blurb come across the wires earlier today, I thought for sure it had to be some kind of a deep fake, some kind of a forgery. But it is, in fact, not. Kamala Harris came out and, using some Atlantic article, tried to advise the American people how dangerous it would be to elect President Trump, having forgotten the fact that she took an oath of office to uphold the Constitution. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering, okay, this isn't going to change who I'm going to vote for, and what does it have to do with the U.S. Constitution? This is going to be a 2016 redo. How many of you remember way back in October of 2016 when people started talking about this concept of faithless electors or Hamilton electors? Well, the courts addressed the fact that states have the ability to change those votes, so to speak, but not all states have actually stepped up and done anything about it. And a couple of those states are swing states now. And in today's video, we're going to cover what we might be looking at and why. The Electoral College may be no more after 2024, but the strange part about this is it is still part of the U.S. Constitution, and Kamala Harris took an oath of office to support and defend the U.S. Constitution, so that might come into play as well. Now, real quick, those of you who have signed up over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, breaking news alert, we have got our unit commanders and brigade commanders briefing up. Like I had said before, we had recently put up videos for everyone, the McKee Foot Soldiers, the $1 level, and then recently we put up another video, the $5 level, the Need to Know group. Well, joint briefing, the second one for the unit commanders, lower left, and brigade commanders, two separate videos, part one and part two. So those are up and ready to go. If you want to go over to Patreon and join us, love to have you over there. At the base level, it's only one U.S. dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year which applies for all levels. And you have between now and, well, basically almost the Super Bowl to decide whether you want to continue to pledge or if you want all of your money back, full refund, 90 days, no questions asked. God bless every one of you. Thank you so much. Once again, unit commanders, brigade commanders, your brand new content is up. It's something you're definitely going to want to see. It's just so easy. It is just so easy now. People are scratching their heads going, are there really Republicans who are so deranged about Mr. Trump that they'd really vote for Harris or stay home? I think a lot of them would stay home, but that's not who she's talking to. She's talking quietly to Republican electors in states where things are kind of close to say, hey, if it goes for Trump, and it's a real close call in the Electoral College, maybe flip your vote in this state or that state. Because there's no law in your state that stops you from doing it. See, this is looking like a reality. This is 270 to win, where you can theorize and do all sorts of different outcomes. Even if you give Mr. Trump North Carolina... Give him Georgia, give him Arizona, and give him Nevada, not likely, but give him Nevada as well. But if she maintains that blue wall, that Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, it comes out to 270 for Donald Trump and 268 for her. Now, what states don't have laws regarding faithless electors. And what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. In this map, every state that is dark green, if an elector is seated to say, like in the case of Oklahoma, to vote for Donald Trump, and they decide, nope, I'm not voting for Donald Trump, I'm going to vote for Carly Fiorina, let's say. It's just somebody, random person out of nowhere. They will void that vote, replace the elector, penalize the elector, 
and the vote will go through for Mr. Trump. It's a winner-take-all state. The only two states where that is the case are North Carolina and Oklahoma. So we can take those two out. Vote voided, still no penalty. All these other states in light green, but look at all the gray and red. Their vote will count. Their vote will count if it's a red state, like dark red here, they'll, the elector will be penalized, possibly with jail time, New Mexico and South Carolina. But in the pink states, including Florida, Alaska, Hawaii, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, Ohio, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, Wisconsin, Wyoming, and Oregon. They are all counted with no penalty. Now, where could, and then look at all the gray states. No laws whatsoever governing it, one way or the other. Georgia is one of those states. So, if you want to look at swing states where you might have to worry, Georgia, Wisconsin. Which one of these are going to be Trump states, though? You could possibly see it in Tennessee. There are a lot of Republicans in Tennessee that are, you know, a little bit more leaning toward perhaps not wanting to necessarily vote for Harris, but maybe casts for, oh, I don't know, Nikki Haley, maybe. I'm not sure we're going to have this problem in Florida, but once again, the vote would count. The vote would count. Now look at this map again. All you would have to have is in Georgia, two electors flip of the 16. Let's say Trump wins Georgia. And two of the electors, two of the electors decide, you know what? I'm going to cast my vote for someone other than Donald Trump. Now, if they don't vote for her, that makes it 268 to 268. Then it goes to Congress. But what about any other state? And what if they would? Two of them would flip in Georgia. Nothing could be done. Tennessee, nothing could be done. Because it's the Supreme Court of the United States has already ruled on this. They ruled in 2020. That said the states have the right to determine this for themselves. This is what's going down. You see, in this particular case, when there were so many people trying to back in when Hillary Clinton won the popular vote in 16 and all this, it's going to be something different now because Kamala Harris took an oath of office. And her oath of office is to uphold and defend the U.S. Constitution. You see, in her little diatribe against... Um, this alleged repeat, this here, it's basically hearsay. I'm surprised she even repeated it. Because there's an article out where a general says that somebody else said, this is hearsay, that Donald Trump said that he, quote, wished he had generals that were as loyal as the generals that served the leader of Germany during World War II. Basically making the idea that loyalty is a good thing. But of course, you know how they're going to twist it. That loyalty is a bad thing. Trust me, we might be seeing 2016 get replayed all over again, but this time with no confusion. Let me show you that map again. You have to kind of look at this and, and kind of overlay the other map in your head and maybe go back and forth. Red, pink, and gray. Which of the states, red, pink, or gray? I guess you could really say, well, I guess, I don't know, South Carolina, vote counted with penalty. Maybe. There could be a Republican or two. Red, pink, or gray. Which states? Ohio. Wisconsin? 
I mean, I could I could definitely see that happen. And well, you see, we're actually if you look at the map though, two seventy win. Hold on, there we go. That's already in the blue, so that would Wisconsin would be off the table. If we if we grant that to her, because if he if he would win it, you know that would mean more than their entire entire uh, slate of electors would have to flip and vote for somebody else. But all they would need in this scenario, which is looking way more likely, I mean, if she if she picks up Nevada, it's over. That's it. If she picks up Nevada, it's over. And Nevada hasn't voted for a Republican since 2004. That was George Bush, George W. Bush, 20 years ago. So the chances of him actually winning Nevada are slim. Incredibly slim. This whole thing in Pennsylvania, it's, you know, if he picks up, let's say he would win Pennsylvania, goes to 283, and she flips Georgia. She wins. 271 to 267. You could see this scenario too. Georgia and Nevada. And like I said, be by one electoral vote. That's how close this is. And I just don't, I'm just sorry. I just, there's so many <clears throat> extra blue votes in Chicago that they haven't already prearranged to have blue votes that were people who actually live in Illinois counting in Wisconsin or people who actually who live in Chicago, I should say, voting in Wisconsin, voting in Michigan. I don't think Detroit's going to have any any problem you know pulling this through for for Harris because this is all I mean even the Republicans up here are not super excited about Mr. Trump. So, if you look at all this, the way it lays out, and even in, even in his best case scenario, even in his best case scenario, where he would pick up both Pennsylvania and Georgia, you'd think, okay, well, wait a minute. Well, she would need, she would need 15 to get to 270, and he'd have to lose 13. I don't think they'd have that big of a problem. I really don't think with as many Republicans that are out there now who are establishment Republicans, you know, the Liz Cheney types, the Bush supporters, the Kinzingers, all them, I don't know if they would have a problem getting 14 Republican electors from these states. Couple here, couple there, couple over there. At this point, there's nothing the governor of Florida could do about it, even if it did happen in Florida, because it's law. The vote counts. So between you know Florida, get some out of Tennessee, get some out of South Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, any of these, Missouri, any of these states, one or two here, one or two there, where there's no law governing it, What are you going to do? So I haven't heard anybody talk about this yet, but this just comes to mind. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. About loyalty, that is. And to listen to Kamala Harris talk pejoratively about loyalty should worry everyone. Because you don't have to like a commander to obey a commander. And nobody's asking the question, in what context was Donald Trump... Let's just assume everything that Kelly said was true. For one minute, let's play devil's advocate. Let's assume that what General Kelly said was true. What was the context of the conversation where Donald Trump felt that he needed to express a desire to have loyal generals? There should be absolutely no question of loyalty... At that level, the man was the elected sitting president of the United States. It is not up to anybody in the chain of command at that point to start parsing what is or isn't constitutional and blah, 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 and all this. 
not your job. I mean, I know what the oath of enlistment says, and I know what you swear and you say, sort of support and defend the Constitution of the United States, doesn't give you free reign to carry in your pocket, as especially as a soldier in the Army, a copy of the Constitution, and every time you get an order to go pull out your Constitution and make sure you go through all the little articles and everything and make sure there's nothing in there that could possibly be construed as a violation of the Constitution, and that, uh, that ain't how it works. That ain't how that works. I mean, the preamble says, um, let's see if I'm going to paraphrase this. I'm not sure if it's the preamble. Um, but the idea of uh, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. All people are endowed with certain inalienable rights. Well, guess what happens in the military, folks? Your rights get put on the back burner. You know, when you put your little John Hancock on that piece of paper when you sign up in the military, you sign away a lot of your rights. Now, some might say, well, you can't. Any, any paper you would sign that would sign away your rights wouldn't be legal. Are you trying to get court-martialed? Because that's a great way to get court-martialed. That's a great way to spend the rest of your life in Leavenworth. And imagine trying to run a military that way. But I digress. So, once again... Patreon folks, God bless every one of you. Thank you so much. I very, very much appreciate it. It's making a huge, huge difference. It's keeping things going right now. It is absolutely the the defining thing right now that's that's keeping everything going. So there was one more thing, and I didn't bring up the picture, but Patreon Nurse has a new video up. Um, talking about this as well, a little different context, but brigade commanders, unit commanders, love to have you. Love to have you at that level. It's high-level psychological operation stuff, basic tactics and techniques, identifying these things. It's definitely worth your money. It's definitely worth your time. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.